Hello and welcome to the Feels Good Podcast with Amanda Cerny. And yes, my co-host Jacqueline Fernandez is coming on, but she's going to let me do a little catch-up time with our special guest. So in this episode, you're going to get a guaranteed dose of feel-good fun that will last you all day long. And a little bit about our guest, if you can guess who it is, he definitely will make you feel good today. And it's in his business to make people feel good all over the world as one of the premier comics comics <laughs> sorry I'm drinking wine and in fact if you want to get a ticket to see him you better do so fast because he sells out arenas and theaters all over the world oh my god <laughs> our guest was awarded the stand-up comedian of the year so yes! hint, there it is and number one on the Billboard charts for his stand-up comedy album, Live from Seattle, which I love. Aww. Touring all over the world on his Just Kidding World Tour, releasing in his Elements, which is a huge <laughs> Netflix hit this year, not to mention hosting his own podcast, The Koi Pond. Yes. Introducing Joe Koi. Yay. Go <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Joe? Uh, <laughs> I'm here. I made it. I made it. I'm like still scampering around though, because I'm like, wait a minute, this is the first time I'm doing a setup in my vanity, Amanda. I'm so so. Amanda, there goes my calculation. By the way, uh, do not rely on me. The reason I'm super late, Joe, and I'm so 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 sorry about this, is because I was like, hey, Amanda, 8:30 a.m. my time, 6 p.m. your time, and all and I like, saw sure. was 6 p.m. my time. Like, got it. Oh. I got it, Jackie. She's like, just relating that 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 time right away, and I'm like, yeah, great. And then like, I'm on my way right now to like my my van to like my set, and she's like, hey, we're on. I'm like, um, I still have <laughs> like, an hour, like thirty minutes. So <laughs> she's feel, like, Joe, feel free to Joe Coy is yeah. on. Just like, yeah, I know, I deserve it. I deserve it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, I'm happy. Disaster. I, I, I like I like going after Amanda. Even yes. when she's oh. wrong, even oh. if Amanda's right, I always want to make sure she's the wrong one. All right, okay, Jacqueline? Good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I, I mean, like, I agree, but I, I have a feeling I'll get a earful for that like, yeah, yeah. right after this podcast. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's cute. Jackie. This is <laughs> like a line on this podcast. <laughs> I know. <laughs> My type A inside of me. Like, it's okay, Amanda. It's <laughs> Hey, Jacqueline, I'm, not I'm only were coffee, you, which I, you're, you weren't just late. Yeah. Joe was late also today. Nope. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I was having oh, technical no. difficulties. <laughs> I was no. late. I was on time. Your, That's what we wait, like to call an excuse. But I had a, I had a microphone just break for no reason. Mm -hmm. Has yeah. that ever happened to you? Does no, that ever it happen? Broke. But I don't even know how it broke. I don't know. <laughs> and then I just and nothing you worse. Know, what I, were, I think you were. What I hate about Zoom is when something breaks and it's all insane. caught on camera, and you're like trying to fix while the camera's running. <laughs> <sighs> it's so dumb. And Zoom is weird. I wanted to be in studio. You know that, right, Amanda? I know. He kept telling me, "It's like we have to be. It'd be cool if we we're in studio and stuff." And I'm like, "You do realize my co-host is in India, <laughs> and we will have to yeah. hop on a plane." And yeah. So, so <laughs> it was, it was, it was pretty crazy this morning because, like, just organizing these times. So uh, we made a plan yesterday that everyone leaves the hotel at 6 a.m. and uh, there's a curfew going on here, by the way, because of oh. like, there's just, it's getting out of control again. Oh, so man. then they're like, no, you can't leave till 6.30 a.m. So we're like, oh shit. And so all of us are like scampering right now. And I'm like, oh, I have to reach, I have to reach really early and I have to get ready for the podcast. So I was like in such a tiff, like when I got into my car and I was like, oh, like really like frustrated. But then I put on your show and uh, I just, I laughed. The, it's like an hour drive here. I laughed the entire way. Oh, and it just changed my mood up completely. Oh. It was just like amazing. It's thank just, you so your much. Your are so good. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate awesome. it. Aww. Today was a good <laughs> yeah. day for me, by the way. I want you guys to know that. Oh. Oh, that's cool. Well, Please happened? tell us about it. All right. So I got off the phone and uh, the deal with Amblin is done. So... Uh, I, I, I sold a movie to uh, Spielberg's people. And what? It's, it's, what? Yeah, it's pretty ah. cool. It's really cool. And it's so funny that you said that about that, that special because coming in hot, 
I did, it was my second special with Netflix and that's the one Spielberg watched. Mm. And, uh, and yeah, so he, he watched coming in hot and, uh, he brought me in immediately for a, a meeting and, uh, you know, next thing you know, I pitched the movie, they, they bought it in the room and, and now here we are about four months wow. later and we just, and that was today. The, the final deal was today. So uh, we're, we're, we're scheduled to go shoot, uh, early 2000, 2021. This happened today. I'm wow. so happy. Oh and, my and God, you're doing our amazing. podcast today and not yeah. uh, sell it. Well, I guess this is like a celebration. <laughs> not hard to celebrate. The best part was the best part was uh, letting my son listen in. I put it. I put the meeting on in, intercom. You know, like uh, what is it called? Yeah. A speaker, oh, speaker, speaker phone, speaker. And just letting yeah. my son and just letting my son hear it was uh, was oh, pretty cool. cool. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. God! How old is your son again? He's How seventeen, he? but. You know, it's just like, you know, the journey was so long. I started stand-up, but there was a lot of years where my son, you know, he didn't know. He was three when I started, you know, getting the specials. And he didn't understand what stand-up wow. was or, or what that is. But now he's at that age where he knows what his dad's doing. And, and to be able to do that deal in front of him, that, it was just so special. Oh, we hugged, that's we, amazing. We hugged so hard today. It was, it was really cool. So I love that. Oh my god, that's amazing! So yeah, you have like really such cool. a close bond with your son. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah. It, was, it was cool when uh, when when they said Spielberg read the script and he loved it. My son just looked at me, and was like, and, and <laughs> "Like I both, know that name." Yeah, <laughs> I it was know that cool. Name. Yeah, yeah. So this wow. is the first place so, so I ever went to. This is the first place I've told anybody. It just happened like a couple <gasps> hours ago. That is huge. Yeah. Oh, oh my god! Like congratulations. Yeah. congratulations. Thank you. Great energy oh my gosh. to start the show on. My God. I yeah. know. I remember when Such you were saying, news. like, it's something that could be. Oh, yeah. You're like, and now it's here. This oh, that's right. I, I went, when I was at your house, I told you that. Mm -hmm. That's right. And I was like, it could happen. You know, because it's Hollywood. You know how it is. Yeah. You know, they'll, oh, they'll yeah. take something and they love it in the room. And then next thing you know, COVID happens. I thought for sure COVID was going <laughs> to I really thought COVID was going to stop this whole thing. I was really? so nervous. I was like, so how, are, are, the, minute, the minute Spielberg says something and then COVID hit, and I'm like, oh, come on. Yeah, I you're like, no, I know. He, he loved it. He was like, no. Such a for everyone. He was like, I'm going for it. So, so, so are you back on, like, just, uh, how is the situation treating you right now bad. when it comes to, like, your shows and stuff? Yeah. It's bad. Hit pretty bad, right? Yeah, the whole tour. Yeah. Um, I, and I still have the tickets out there. We, we told everyone to, you know, that they can return tickets. They're not returning them. <laughs> they're, they're holding on to them. So we, 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 oh. we, it's crazy. Like we gave the option. We under, I, you know, I understand, like, I don't want to hold on to tickets. So I told, I gave everyone an option to return the but, tickets but, and, and they're not, they're holding on to them. I love that. That's so supportive. Do you have any dates? Do you have any, like, I know, but do you have any like finalized dates? No, no, the dates are final. Like, shows are going to, they they just been moved to they start uh, right around April May of twenty twenty one. Amanda, we are so going for those shows. What? I mean, I've been to Jeez, one. Please let's 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 we make a plan. I went to the one at the forum, which was uh, insane. That was so cool. freaking funny, and the fact that you performed at the forum, yeah. I'm sure that was like a huge that bucket list item. Yeah, it <laughs> for was. You as well, you know what was crazy about that, Amanda? Is there was like this. Uh, and Jacqueline, I'm sorry. There was this, uh, there was this like uh, bidding for it. They, because the Staples Staples Center wanted me to perform, and they offered me a Thursday, and then the Forum offered me a, a, a Friday, oh. and, uh, and and then they 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 wine and dine me. They were like, before you think about Staples, <laughs> just come see a show at the Forum and, and just see how it sounds and feels. <laughs> they gave me tickets to Elton John, his last show at the Forum, and the minute. Wow. Uh, Elton walked on stage. I just looked at my manager and I was like, I have to perform on the stage with <laughs> that. This is Elton John's last show is at the forum. Wow. And you're like, give me he, that. He same retired mm -hmm. and I want to be on that stage. I want to perform. I want my name next to Elton John. They write all our names on the walls. So oh. yeah. So like I'm on that wall with him. And, uh, and, and that was, that was the deal maker for me. Just seeing Elton John's last show at the forum. And then for me to get on that same stage was just amazing. Oh, wow. God. How do you yeah. celebrate Amazing. things? Like, huge things happen, right? And yeah. obviously, I know you work really hard. Are you – so many questions for you. One, how do you celebrate? Let's get there first. And then yeah. the yeah. hard work. I, you know, it's crazy. Like, 
that I just like to spend those kind of things I like to spend with family. Mm-hmm. You know, the other shows, it's like, you know, I'll have fun with just, you know, I don't know, hanging out with friends and stuff afterwards and, and enjoying those moments. But something like that, that was, that was all about my son that night and, and just getting him to come up on stage. You saw it, Amanda. Yeah. You saw him get on stage. And- you, yeah, I love how you include the people around you, your family. Like, yeah. it's personal and you could really feel that. And it brings, yeah. like, the audience and even your friends even closer to you, just even uh, coming in hot with the Philippines and everything, too. It's just... <laughs> Yeah, you yeah. learn a lot, but in such a fun way about different culture, about you, about your family, and I just love how you include family. Oh, like, uh, thank you. Because that, that I, you know, when when I get off stage, a lot of people think some of the stories aren't real, and then when they see a face to it, they're like, oh, oh well, that is we his mom, oh, and that <laughs> is his son, and and then, and then it becomes those jokes become real to 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 the fans. So I love sharing my family with that. With, with my fans. When was the last time you went to the Philippines? When I shot uh, coming uh, when I shot in his elements. Oh. So the last Netflix special uh, I shot there, and the, and that was a, such a, a a push for me because they actually wanted me to shoot a third hour special, but I I wanted to give Filipinos a shot, so I was like, you know, I got the door open here at Netflix. Let me just go to the Philippines with some Filipino comics that's never been to the Philippines. Let me show them their wow. culture in person and then let them perform in front of Filipinos. And I also wanted to show the world that when you go to the Philippines, you can perform and people understand English there. Oh, so, yeah. A lot of people I, don't I, I know actually, that. I actually grew up with so many Filipinos and like they were speaking Tagalog. And yeah. They were like, I mean, like. And, and they're I speaking mean, English. And they're speaking, almost speaking Spanish. Like, yeah. it's like, it's crazy. Yeah. But I mean, they had, they had the best lunch boxes. I don't know if like you had the best <laughs> lunch boxes, but they had the <laughs> best lunch. Amanda, I'm not joking. Like in school every single day. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Filipino food. The sausages. Yeah. They came to school every day with these crazy, like, I mean, Longanisa. like crazy sausages. And it, oh, <laughs> it's called it was Longanisa. like some good stuff. So good. Is it called Loganisa? Yeah, oh Loganisa. So good. Thank you. And, and they were like, they were always like the best artists in our school. Like they, they, they drew really they well drew. and like they were really neat. They I were love so that. neat. Their handwriting was always amazing. Yes. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I love the fact that, you know that it's, you know, but the one thing that I wanted to do is, you know, through my stand up, I wanted people to know that I was Filipino, but I wanted to do it indirectly. I didn't want people to just be like, oh, all he does is compare Filipinos with other ethnicities. <laughs> I didn't want to do that. I wanted to tell a story and see if people could relate. Yeah. I wanted to tell my mom's story through her just being a mom. And then at the end, you're like, hey, my mom does that too. Mm-hmm. That way, the, that yeah. way you know, it's not about being Filipino, it's just being a mom. It's just mine happens to be a Filipino. And, and that's how I wanted to get that point across. But when I went to, when I shot that third special in the Philippines, I just wanted people to like see our culture because we're not really represented. I always feel like an ambassador when people find out I'm a Filipino, I always have to be an ambassador and tell them about us. (laughs) But with that special, I wanted something that people can watch it and be like, ooh, that's beautiful. I want to visit that country. Ooh, those people are nice people. I want to say, ooh, that food looks good. And that's what that whole special was about. Just to embrace the culture and just give back to a, 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 a group a community. of community gave me so much, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. And I love how you included, allowed all the different performers on the special as well. Yeah. Like big chunks of the special too. Not just like, Oh, like here and go yeah. away. Was, Thank you. You gave them moments, but That's even so going <laughs> to shooting your own special. Yeah. I shot was, that thing. I paid for it, Amanda. Which is amazing. And, and, it, also and, it, and I was hurt. I was hurt, too. I want you to know that, Amanda. You were hurt? Yeah, I was hurt because I felt, I felt like and, – and, you know, I say this all the time. So, if, you know, the people at Netflix know that I say this story all the time because I love Netflix now. I have the greatest relationship with them. I mean, I'm already on my fourth special. I'm getting ready to shoot my fourth with them. So they're, they're great. They just, they just didn't know if I was what they needed on, on that platform. And, and that's great. They're, they're, suppo- they're a business. You know what I mean? I had to go the extra mile yeah. to prove to them that I belonged on that network. And, and, and when you get it faced with an, oppor- uh, an obstacle like that, it, you pick which direction you want to go. You know, when someone says, no, we don't think you're ready for this network, you can choose to go on Twitter and go, you know what? Cancel your Netflix 
a subscription. They don't want to give me a special. Yeah. And, and, and hey, Fight or you could be like, or you could be like, all right, well, just give me a couple months. I'll shoot it myself and I'll bring it to you. And, and that's what I had to do. Wow. I was mad. Don't get me wrong. When I was on stage, I was not happy. I was, I was, I was actually very depressed on stage when I was shooting live from Seattle because I, I just didn't understand Whoa. how my friends had specials, but I wasn't offered one. But You can never just, tell. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. I just remember being backstage and looking <laughs> at my son and, and just like, I'm broke right now. I have no money. I spent all of it on this special. And if they don't buy it from me, what do I do with it? You know? So there was so much pressure on that, life from Seattle. I, I, love, I love that you're actually sharing that story as well, because it's, I, I think like a lot of people like to eliminate these like little details about their journey and their struggle yeah. and just make it look like, yeah, I, I got on Netflix and it was great. And like, you know, they loved me. And here yeah. you're like, no, it actually, because it, it really is. I think like if you really do want something, you, you have to go out and get it. Yeah. You have to make it happen for yourself. And that was... That was number one on the Billboard charts, right? That, it, it not only hit number one, but uh, it changed my life. It was crazy. I mean, it went from uh, wow. me selling comedy clubs out to like Stadium. selling multiple theaters out. It was crazy. <laughs> it was wow. nuts. Wow. And then, wow. And, yeah, oh it was crazy. You produced that, though. I completely produced everything. Out of pocket. All of it. But that's, that's why I always tell people, it's like, you know, when you see somebody, don't just take it for what you see in front of you, try and find out what it, what it was that got them there. Mm -hmm. Like really study and take the time. Cause we live in this cancel culture right now where oh, you see somebody and they got something you hate on them. Cause it makes you feel good. Cause you're not there or something or whatever it is that, that makes you, uh, it's the easy satisfaction. It's the easy, it's the e yeah. yeah. It's the easy way out. Instead of just finding out what that person did or finding out that struggle, um, you'll, you'll, you'll appreciate what you got a lot more. When you and hear it's other so people's stories, so much more stories. fulfilling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it really so was inspiring. It was hard, man, but I, I was I was happy that 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 it happened, and uh, and I always thank Netflix for putting doing that to me because I, I I told them when when they said no to me that there was a fire that that was lit, like like no no because the, the pressure was on. I was twenty eight years in the game, and I still haven't had that major special that pushed me forward, and I knew that was the routine that could make it happen. So. I had to make it myself. And I was like, I was happy they did that because then I became yeah. a producer. Cause after that, yeah. they, the, the, the next three yeah. after that, they, they gave me the money. It was so funny yeah. when coming in hot came out, they just wrote a check and they go do what you did with life from Seattle. And they, they, they stepped wow. back and just let me produce it myself. Me and my sister ran through that one. So it was kind of, it's kind of cool. So man. much more of a, I mean, you, wow. That's like, but such a stronger business that you were able to build through having to do it on your own. Not only are you getting mm -hmm. like the talent fee and the performance fee as a comedian, but now you're a producer as well, which is yeah. a lot of the, the money making in Hollywood is in production also. So yes. like you're able to really provide for your family now, which is amazing. That's crazy. You know, it's crazy too, Amanda, Jacqueline. Sorry. I keep not saying <laughs> um, Sorry. Is uh, I shot, I shot live from Seattle. Uh, like in February, right? And then they made me wait. And then I cut it up myself. I think I, it took me like two months to cut. And then I got it on their table like in June. And then after June, we waited. Like the, the process. Like when we put it on their table, we waited. And then, and then they finally were like, don't send it anywhere. We're going to put in an offer. And then right away, we're like, okay, they're going to put an offer. We, we got it. Mm -hmm. we're gonna, I'm going to be on Netflix. <laughs> and, they, and we waited, Right. And it was right the day before Thanksgiving that they said wow. they put in the offer for my special. So it's so crazy that I got that deal with Netflix, my first deal on Thanksgiving, the day before Thanksgiving. And from that, I'm sorry, this is going to be a long story because I just thought of it right now that this is all kind of <laughs> full circle. But if I didn't shoot that special, when they said that they didn't want one, if I would have went the other route and, and, and hated on Netflix and, 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 and didn't produce it myself. I would never, I would have never got the second special, which was coming in hot, which is my second special on, on Netflix. And since they gave me that second special, that's the one that Steven watched. So it's like wow. you create your opportunity. You know what I mean? Of course. When they said no yeah. to me, I could have easily not have made this special, but I didn't. I chose to make it myself and sell it to them. And because of that, I got coming in hot. And because of coming in hot, that's why I got that Netflix. Uh, that's why I got the deal with Steven Spielberg. And look what day yeah. it's on. It's the day before Thanksgiving. Again. Oh, 
my god! Oh my god! I, this, that's a, this is a great day for you. This is crazy. And Isn't yeah, this crazy, they, Jacqueline? That is the day we were casted in a Spielberg. <laughs> oh, you're my right. God. Look this at the crazy. irony. Yes. Just look this at is the- crazy. The days be. Is, I mean, <laughs> mind blowing. <laughs> yeah. This is huge for all of us. I all of us. It. <laughs> it's a this great, is the everyone, day. Everyone celebrate. Cheers. <laughs> cheers. Uh, cheers, everyone. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> cheers. <laughs> I have one of those. <laughs> oh, my God. I want one. Done. I'll send it to you. I, please do. Oh, it's my God. Done. That's so cute. Boom. I, I'll send this, minute, too. I, I, please oh, send I don't this even across have as well. The book comes I out in March. That. Oh, Next oh play. my god! I love it. So wait, what? What is this? Is this like? Did you did you work on this with a writer? Did you like? Two, is this your biography? Two and a half years it took me to write that thing because I was on tour, but uh, it, it it worked out. Chris Farah helped me write it, and uh, wow, I, I I couldn't believe how much I put into this. But I told every story, you know. It, this this was therapy for me. It really was. Yeah. It it, it really like healed me and and uh, you know just yeah. getting in depth. I talked about my brother, which I never talk about, and uh, it, that was it was really healing to to be able to get those stories out there like that. Oh wow! Yeah, I haven't. I I got to read that. Yeah, I don't yeah. know about that on the stand up. No, I never have, and it's such so a it's hard thing for me March. to talk about. Yeah, March. So uh, yeah, I can't wait for you guys. All to right. See. Amanda, awesome. can you buy it though? I don't want to give it to you for free all the time. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll see. <laughs> I'll check with. It. Yeah, I'll, I'll buy it. Amanda, I'll buy it. Amanda, buy me one too. <laughs> okay, buy me one too and send it down. Who wants one? Comment below. If you want a joke? Buy boy, us all. Mix plate. Is, what's it called? The mix a mix plate. And that mix plate. Mix plate. Pl- mix plate. I love the name. Mm. So you know when you go to Hawaii, yeah. they have mix plate. And it has, and when you look at that plate, it has a little bit of Asian. It has some, it's got yes. macaroni. It's got, it's got Korean barbecue. It's got. My case has papaya. <laughs> papaya, it always has papaya. <laughs> but, but that's, that's kind of like my life. My life is, that's, that's my culture. That, that, you know, when you look at how my surroundings were and the people that raised me, it's a big mixed plate, man. I'm half white, half Filipino. You know what I mean? I got half black, half Filipino a, uh, 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 cousin, uh, nephews. I got, you know, it's just everything. I got Latinos in my family. I got everything. We're a mixed plate and, and I love it. And that's, that's what that's all about. Today's episode is brought to you by Clorox. When it counts, trust Clorox. The same way we trust essential workers to provide the care they give to us. Our families trust us to give them a safe and a protective home. Our community heroes trust Clorox to keep places like hospitals and grocery stores disinfected. So I know I too can trust Clorox to provide my home with a safe environment at home we can all enjoy. That is why I trust Clorox Regular Bleach. By mixing one-third cup of Clorox Regular Bleach with one gallon of water, when used as directed on hard, non-porous surfaces, it kills 99.9% of germs and bacteria on a variety of surfaces, from our kitchen floors to the counters to bathroom tubs to, of course, laundry wipes. I know I can count on Clorox disinfecting products to give myself and my family the best home we deserve. I use Clorox disinfecting products to keep my laptop and my home and loved ones safe and clean, especially when it comes to high-touch surface areas like doorknobs or toilet seat handles or even the remote. For me, it's important to share with loved ones and the public in general how they can give the most care for their loved ones because when it counts, trust trust Clorox. Clorox. (laughs) <laughs> I don't know what it is vegan, with me. Vegan cheese isn't that bad. It's really no, good. Vegan. It's not that no, bad. No, it's actually really bad. It's really bad. It's horrible. <laughs> I, uh, I love I, I love cheese so much, <laughs> and I'm lactose, and I don't give a shit. Oh, my God. Oh, what ew. happens when you're lactose? <laughs> wait, wait. What happens when you're ew, lactose what intolerant? Happens, when you're ew, lactose? What happens to you? <laughs> yeah. This is what, what I'll tell you, you right now. It sounds like... Uh, my stomach is crumbling. It's oh. just, it's just the whole oh. night, and I don't care. You know that's not what <laughs> happens. Bro. I just look at my stomach and go, "Be strong, bro." 
<laughs> There's more do coming this. down. There's more coming down. <laughs> All right. Well, a long I, journey, you know, coming from like a Sri Lankan background. Oh my God. It's just like meat is such a major part of the culture Yeah, and like having that in your curry and having that as part of your diet. So it, it's a difficult one to remove because like as a kid, when you're, you're raised that way, how do you like get it out of your system? So yeah, it's hard. But I mean, like all of you guys have come from being non We got to get you better internet, Jacqueline. Yeah. I think I think Jacqueline is on uh, but dial Amanda, up. Amanda did it though. I, I have the times. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think mountain. I think Jacqueline. I, I, I is, don't even know what I love is. I think Jacqueline is hooked up on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> this is like it's like us <laughs> talking to people on the I space know. shuttle right now. Oh, you're frozen, Jacqueline. <laughs> It's great though. Oh, I am? No! It's such, it is a cute face. I hope it's a good Frozen. Yeah, you yeah it is that. a good one. You it's sound a, great though. <laughs> it's a podcast. It's yeah. fine. Mm -hmm. Just, we'll just let, like, it go. let it go. <laughs> let it go. Damn it. We'll, we'll edit in movie just clips. Let it go. This is like the complications of yeah. everybody's reality right now on yeah. Super calls, calls dropping, uh, like everything. It's just, yeah. It's, the struggle is real, but we the get struggle through. struggle is real. Humans are meant to adapt. <laughs> <laughs> Am I still frozen? Uh, yeah, still you frozen. By the way, yeah, you're you've been frozen oh. for about thirty minutes, Jacqueline. Oh, we saw some movement. Yeah, there's some movement. Yeah, there's some. No, movement. no, yeah. I've been frozen for thirty minutes. Quite some yep. time. That's crazy. Yeah. Wait but a minute. I'm gonna log. I'm, I'm gonna log back in. All right, you jump back I'm gonna in. Log back in. Joe, yeah. okay. I, Joe and I are gonna keep going. Yeah. All right. So you. All right. You back in. That was fun. I hope she makes it to Mars. <laughs> <laughs> Do a podcast, uh, they said. Yeah. <laughs> Over Zoom, they said. <laughs> it's going great. <laughs> but listen to this. Yes, ma'am. I got a fun fact. Scotland is the first nation to make period products free. Wow. So no Kotex, no Playtex, like no, no brands. You just get free items, right? I was just saying, for working group, okay. We have established an access to free sanitary products, working group with membership drawn from a number of Scottish government teams. Wait, no, that's not. What are you okay. reading, Amanda? Nope. <laughs> oh. Thanks for coming back even worse. <laughs> what is that? Oh, I'm back. Thanks for coming back as a robot. <laughs> oh, no! Oh, no. Wait, I'm out. <laughs> and actually, this frozen screen, let's interpret Jacqueline's yeah. frozen screen right now. Um, this is when she found out that her computer was on fire. <laughs> <laughs> this, is when, this is when Jacqueline found out that that's not a computer screen she's looking at, that's an aquarium. <laughs> <laughs> this is when Jacqueline realized that she shouldn't have done the podcast inside someone's closet. <laughs> There's a hanger. <laughs> Very quick and observant. Wow. This is when Jacqueline found out that those headsets actually belong on an astronaut's head. <laughs> she left. <laughs> she <laughs> and the roast is complete. <laughs> Success. Well, I guess you can put oh, on other fun facts. <laughs> That's actually a really fun game. That was fun. We, we should have her freeze all the time. I think we will. Oh, God, that's great. Jacqueline, just don't talk. She's not even here. In her defense, she is in the mountains. Oh, well, here she comes. Here she comes. She's, she's fighting it. She's fighting it. <laughs> Because she doesn't want to hear from me after. <laughs> <laughs> Jacqueline, you should have your Wi-Fi prepared for that. There she is. Oh, she's back. She's back. I'm, I'm so scared. I'm so scared right now. Hi, oh, I'm you're, frozen. You're, you're good. You're good. Just don't you're move. Back, you're back on Earth. Yep. Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Like. <laughs> I know you guys. Wait, what happened to me last time? Oh, nothing. 
<laughs> um, you were oh, Jacqueline, you weren't in a coma. Wait. You just had bad Wi-Fi. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Jacqueline, you just had bad <laughs> Wi-Fi. She's, I heard she's you acting like she's in a coma. Like, I, I was like, <laughs> Jacqueline, Jacqueline is acting like she was in a coma for six months. What? Oh, was it a car accident? <laughs> <laughs> No, no, Jacqueline. You just had dial up. That's all. You had that's to... that's millennials for you. Yeah. Or, I, what are, what gen are I we? I don't even know what that is. I don't even know okay. what I am. Jacqueline was like, "Oh, we're gonna do a podcast <laughs> together. Should I get dial up?" <laughs> <laughs> but guys, this is this is my this is a dongle. I don't know if like this is my dongle. This is my Wi-Fi. So oh, you know, call it dongle here. that's why. You got a dongle. Oh, yeah. it's a dongle. Dongle. <laughs> dongle. But I, I didn't even. I never trust. I didn't even dongle. know what dial-up is. I never trust a dongle. I never. Mm. Well, look, I have full network. <laughs> Apparently. Hey, Jacqueline, I know why your Wi-Fi is messed up. Why? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> got to move your hanger over. Just move the hanger over a little. <laughs> the antenna. <laughs> it's. Just move the antenna over to the left of your. Just do Try it. Just it. do it, Jacqueline. Just move it. I think that's. Let me get the reception. No, no, no. no. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Guys, I actually noticed that in the beginning of the podcast, and I was like, I, I really hope no one sees that hanger over there. Oh, we saw. I noticed it. that Jacqueline, in the beginning. I have a question for you guys. Um, oh, you know, I love to hear. It. You know how there's island time. Yes. Was there, um, like, Asian time? Oh, yeah, Filipino time. <laughs> for oh, Filipino sure. Time. So it's not yeah. the whole continent. It's oh, my mom is, uh, <laughs> my mom will be late to anything. <laughs> She'll be late to anything. But here's how my mom is. My mom will be late to something that she obviously knew the time for, but still act like, oh, that was today? Like, <laughs> like oh, your birthday was your birthday was yesterday. <laughs> like, mom, you gave birth to me. Oh, oh you're lucky she remembers. You, you know when my birth. You were the one. You you made me. So yeah, my mom. My mom is that person. Late to everything, always. Well, I guess the Filipino. The Philippine. The Filipino. The yeah, Philippine. The Filipino. Like, just one Filipino, by the way. The Philip. The mom. The Filipino. Yeah. Um, hey Joe. Hey Joe. Have you ever been to the Filipino? <laughs> hey, I was going to say a fact about the Philippines. <laughs> oh, okay. 7,100 islands. Yes. Yeah? Yep. And so if it is island time, I guess it's like the most extreme kind of island time there could be. So it all makes sense. Sense. Wow. There's a bunch of islands. That's was a bunch that, of times. Was Whoa. that a mind blown? That was mind blown right there. I agree. Okay. Hey. Wait, I want you guys to cut okay, something sorry. up for me. What? You remember when I told you that they sent me to, uh, when I was going to, I had to choose between uh, the form or, or Staples, and then they got me to the form, brought me to see Elton John's last show at the, the forum. Mm -hmm. So that's what made my decision to go to the forum. Guess what happened right before the, the pandemic? What? <laughs> I made the top 10 list of arena acts in the world Number one was Elton John, and I was number 10. What? Wow. Is that cool? That is so cool. Is that cool or what? When, when did you find that out? Like, that was oh right God. before the pandemic, like when they shut all the tours down. I made it to number wow. 10. And I was still climbing, by the way. Because I still like, have... COVID was like, no. <laughs> yeah, COVID was like, we'll keep you at 10. <laughs> yeah, 10 is good. Uh, you go. Let's keep it, keep it low. Yes. <laughs> But are you, so are you enjoying, I know we're supposed to jump to fun facts, but are you enjoying this time of not touring as much? Yes. This is the first full year I spent with my son ever. Whoa. Yeah. First this full man. year. And How I never does he do. Feel? <laughs> How does he, he feel? I know. So funny, right? Actually, he <laughs> loves it and I love it. We've, we've never done so much more stuff together. I, I didn't realize how important one day was. You know, I always had that Thursday through Sunday run on the road and being with my son Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then, you know, having myself be on a plane on Thursday night. So that was always my life being in a different city every weekend. And I just thought that was normal. Yeah. 
And the beautiful thing about this pandemic is really enjoying every single day with my son. This is my first full year ever with him, and I love it. Wow. Wow. Yeah, it's crazy how we all get so caught up in work and our moments, and I know this is said a lot, but it makes me like sit back and think, and it's so good just to sit back and think of this sometimes because it's you think things are so important and you're like, all right, I have to do this. I have to do this. I have to do, do this throughout my day. And then when you take a minute to just sit down and realize like the years of life that you have, the days that like are guaranteed to you or uncertain and just the people that you love that you have around your friends, your family, and really just taking the time not to act like you don't have time for them, but to make yeah. time for them is so important. And I feel like one of the positive things about COVID is it made people realize, okay, time is limited, you know, and yep. we really got to just put it with the people that we love, support the people that we love and just put our time and energy there as much as yeah. we can. That's so true. And if there's things that you thought that you couldn't do it because you didn't have enough time, COVID showed you that you had plenty of time to do it. And if you're not doing it, you're just lazy. So, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I find myself doing a lot of things that I never thought I had time for. And, you know, and, and, and or, or, you know, I always found an excuse to not do it. And, and now I find myself doing a lot of the things that I've been wanting to do for a long time. And it's, it's been great. Mm, I need to go yeah, produce something. I agree. <laughs> you're so <laughs> <angry>. <laughs> Write something. For real. Uh -huh. Well, we can go into our fun facts. Jacqueline, I'll let you start, start us off there. Jacqueline. Awesome. Yes, I'm your, here. It looks like your dongle's working better. It ever does. Since, ever since you moved that hanger. Is I it? told you. Yes. <laughs> it really is. Oh, <laughs> oh three-second delay Yay. here. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I know. I, oh, damn it. This is like the last time I'm using this dongle. All right. <laughs> All right, guys. So if you guys said number, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> so number one, random fun fact for you, Joe. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Oh no! <laughs> He's got again. Uh, All right. I'm gonna. It's mixed with the. You... Uh, uh, Jacqueline, I love you, but just smile. God, India is far. <laughs> guys, can I just listen in? <laughs> you can. For this one, you can until you get your better dongle. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm going. All right. Fun facts. Unless food is mixed with saliva, you can't taste it. Ooh, that's that's true. How do you know that fun fact? Wait, is it true? Yeah. I just I just assumed Yes. It. I would oh. hate to eat something dry mouth. That was like for me I was shocked by that <laughs> one. Oh, really? Yeah, for you it's so such common knowledge. Um, I, I don't know. I just guessed on that, but I was just like, I would hate to eat something with a dry mouth. That's got to be, ugh. <laughs> yeah, well, it's true. So if you don't want to taste something, <laughs> swallow hard and eat it fast before you salivate. Ooh. That's what... That's what we say all the time. <laughs> yep. Hey, um, That's what Jacqueline says. <laughs> One, two... two. <laughs> there we go. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Humans have genetic capability to hibernate. Scientists think that a human's ability to hibernate may lie dormant in our genetic code. Ooh, I believe that. It's gonna, that's going to provide a lot of excuses for people that are just like sleeping all day. Like, hey, I believe it though. I, I think when you rest a lot more, uh, your immune system builds up. Oh yeah. I think tired people get sick. And, and I believe that. I think we should all be like bears. Mm -hmm. Bears sleep through the winter, and guess what? They don't catch the flu. So, oh. you know what I mean? They That's get up true. and stretch, get some salmon, and then go right back to sleep. So, also, leaning on to number three, chewing gum while peeling onions will keep you from crying, which is great to know during the holiday season while you're in the kitchen. That's like a lie. What? Really? I think so. It's got to be. Well, here's the reason why. Onions irritate the lacrimal glands, 
causing them to excrete tears. Chewing gum while cutting onions prevents tears by forcing you to breathe through your mouth. This disperses the irritant so that a significantly smaller amount reaches the lacrimal glands. No. Nope. Running- <laughs> preventing them from irritating enough to release tears. That's a lie. Why do you disagree? Because I'm a mouth, <laughs> I'm a mouth breather because I have sleep apnea. So I always breathe through my mouth. I don't think I ever breathe through my nose. Now that every you time say I, that. Every time I cut onions, I, I, I can't handle it. It's just I start crying. Uh, I can have gum. I don't care what you have. I, it, I'll, I'll cry. I believe you. And I'm very disappointed in our facts because that's fiction. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I, I believe you. And now I also hear, I, he, I hear the mouth breathing a little bit. I breathe through my mouth all the time. I'm like Biggie Smalls. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm probably even talking about cut onions. Oh. Wait, so wait, why do you have that again? It's, uh, I have sleep apnea. What, so so what it's is just that? like, I, I can't, uh, I choke when I sleep. Like I just, the way I snore, I just, I don't breathe. I stop breathing when I, when I sleep. So like my whole life, I've always, like, I, I force myself to breathe through my mouth. So I just, that's how I breathe. Do you still I snore? Through my nose. Yeah. If I don't have my mask on, I wear a full mask. If oh, wow. I don't wear it, yeah. If I don't wear it, I, I, I choke. I, I, I could die. It's, so it's you've, crazy. You've been training for COVID. My whole life. Your whole life. Wow. My holy old. old. <laughs> I've been training. I've been training COVID for a holy old. old. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> I lost my co-host. It's fine. I got for days. I'll tell you. Yeah. The world's healthiest place to live, according to the International Living in Shang Shangri-La Valley in Panama. Oh, so it's the healthy healthiest place to live. Have you ever been there? No, I've never been there, but why is it the healthiest place? It's the low cost of living, significantly longer life expectancy, a warm climate, an active social scene, healthy food, and a slower pace of life that makes less for daily stress. Stress, I feel like, kills. Yeah, stress kills. 100%. Yeah. Mm. Have you ever been so stressed uh, you feel it in your chest? Yeah. Like a pain, like a sharp pain? Sometimes I have Johannes just press right here on me. Because you're stressed out? Yeah. Yeah, I, I hate that. That's I hate so- that feeling. And, and I've, I've been teaching myself to kind of like breathe through it. Mm. But I do hold a lot of – no, you know, because I don't. Back in the day, I used to be just uh, – till it, you know, just stressed, like mad. <laughs> no, I, I just pictured you mouth breathing through it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm stressed, I breathe like this. Oh. 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 Oh no. Well, at least that like helps relieve it. I feel like yeah. breathing techniques really do work and then also yeah, cuz that's kind of what I do too. Cuz even when I like do pressure points or whatever, cuz I also do here and that yeah. helps too. And I'll just take a moment and just ignore everything and I'm like, okay. Yeah. It's it's, Not, it's it's yeah. Yeah, we got to learn how to like I used to get mad in the car. I don't do that anymore. Because you're not in the car. But you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking yeah, about yeah. driving. Yeah, road rage. You have I road used to rage? be bad. I used to be bad. Mm. And but nah, I don't care. If you cut me off, I just slow down and go, all right, get to where you need to be, sir. <laughs> you, just, you just make you make fun with it. Yeah, I don't, like, even, I don't even, like, I don't even react to it. Yeah, like that's be, so good. Before I used to react, but now I'm like, oh, okay, cool. I think that's what's the best thing is being able to realize our flaws or recognize them and acknowledge them and just yeah. that we can improve. And it's so good. <clears throat> like even for me, um, with our puppy, that's all I ever talk about, but sometimes he pisses me off so much because yeah. he'll come and he'll just like razor blade teeth attacking me, humping me left and right, yeah. jumping on me. And I'm like, you're like, are you talking about Johannes? Both. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Actually, Johannes gets very jealous and upset. He's really? like, he's like, no, that's no. <laughs> and just yells yeah. at Falco more than me in those moments. But yeah. we both were like, okay, we, even though we're so mad at him, we can't yell at him. We can't, we can scream just to scare him to stop, but yeah. we can't, he's a baby. 
And then also just people learn better through and people <laughs> animals learn better through reward and um, just showing them the right behaviors like the right way to ask positive, like positive ways of training. And so really in doing that, he's been learning so fast. He does it automatically before we even have to tell him. And I feel like people are a little bit similar too. Cause like, yes, even my strategy would used to be, Oh, well you're doing this wrong. You're doing this wrong. You're doing this wrong. And then instead it's like, Oh, great job on doing this right. Great job on doing this right. Great job on yeah. doing this right. So kind of showing them this is good. It's yes. more motivating, more motivating. Yeah. Those are usually the bad managers are the ones that do it the other way. <laughs> yeah. I hate those managers. Those are the ones I always quit on. <laughs> my, yeah. My manager, she's just always giving me positive affirmations. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait <laughs> so a minute. No, no, no. I'm sorry, Amanda. <clears throat> I'm not talking about our management. Like now I'm talking about when I used to work. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yes, like, yes, like yes. When I used to work at like uh, Nordstrom Rack, mm -hmm. I used to sell shoes. I used to hate my manager. You know what I mean? Like, like no positive yeah. reinforcement. It was always just, you didn't do this. You didn't do that. You didn't do this. Like, yo, really? Like nothing? You're yeah. not going to give me anything for any of the other things? All right, well, I'm going to start throwing shoes away. <laughs> yeah. Or taking some home. Yeah, or taking some <laughs> home. <laughs> but it's so true. I mean, it's, that's definitely something you learn throughout life. I feel like some people, I wonder if it's just something that they – no right away. And that's automatically how they manage, how they work things. But for me, it was something that was learned for yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. even the way, and I manage stuff. I'm like, Oh, do this. Cause for me, I'm, I'm a perfectionist. Like yeah. I, I want everything to be great. And I'm always like, I would always be like, Oh, this and this and this and this got to work on this. That has to be better. And then yeah. I noticed things improving when it was more like great job on this. Oh, that was amazing. <clears throat> but it's not to say not to highlight not to not highlight um, when people are really effing up, but because yeah. <laughs> I think that's important too, right? Like, oh, yeah. You manage your whole business. You manage like you have to. Like a lot of people look at talent and they're like, oh, they're just talent. But you need yeah. to oversee the things that are going on in your, in your world. What, are, what is some advice that you could give to somebody that's new to doing that or even influencers that are new to doing that and how much trust they should have? and I, you know, my number one rule for me, and I learned through experience, is uh, keep your circle tight. You know, trust is a, a, a hard thing to give, especially when you get to a certain level, right? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? And, and it's hard to trust people, you know? And, you know, when, when you have someone that you do trust, value that person and, yep. and really cherish who you have in your team. Uh, you do a great job of that. I remember even... Um, your social media guy came over with you too. And yep. you were just like praising him yep. all the time, like shouting him out, like giving him credit, like talking. Yeah. And, you know, and he, you can tell you, you guys have a good relationship and he appreciated the support. Like you're very supportive, I noticed. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I, I, you know, there's those times where you, you have disputes, right? But you always have to make sure that you, uh, show the appreciation, just like you said earlier. You know what I mean? It's like, hey, yeah, this was messed up, but hey, I appreciate you. You're, you're great. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Let's do this. Let's do that. And um, yeah, and like, like you said, he, Jacob's great, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and it, yeah. I'm I horrible with names. No, that's fine. But it was, yeah. it's cool that you pointed that out, you know, because there's times, you know, where I'll get mad, but then I also let them know, like, dude, you're a genius. Like, Mm -hmm. You know, we messed up and that's fine. It, it'll work out. And yeah, have that balance. But I also understand that I need him, you know? Yeah, and yeah I need him. And, and he's very important. So mm -hmm. a lot of people seem to forget that. Yeah. And that's when yeah. the business goes bad. Yep. Can't be a one-man show, especially no. as you grow. That's, it team. limits you. Yeah, my manager, Joe Mal you know, I failed to mention him, you know, with the Live from Seattle. But I always tell people, like, he's the one that said we got the money. You know, you have the money, go, let's go, mm -hmm. let's shoot it. And, and he was, he's another reason why I did that, that live from Seattle was because of my manager. He was amazing to, to make that call and, and have the confidence in me to, 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 to shoot that, that special. I know I keep going back on that, but, but I like how we're talking about this topic. It's like, you know, if there's anything that you could do in this business, 
it's keep your circle tight and appreciate who you have. Totally. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like even for me, you know, I'm able to focus more on creatives now and it, it was definitely something I built, but with my manager, Lacey, like I, I talk about her all the time cause I'm obsessed with her and I, I, really do trust her and trust with me is like something that's definitely earned. Yeah. Um, I think it should be with everybody. And I usually give it like a, a good, depending on how much you interact or you're around with around somebody and you also pay attention to situations and just yes. be observant because that's where it really shines through. But yep. I, well, so it's hard to put like a time stamp on when you can begin to trust somebody. But for me, it's always been like a good year and a half or so or year probably a year of like being around somebody a lot talking to somebody a lot to really just let loose or some people you do right away too but like I still that's being a little bit naive in my mind but maybe that's negative I don't know no it's a little different in our situation I think right yeah we're just saying this for anybody you should be like that but like you know when you get to like you know where we're at right now, it, it's, it's, it's more like we got to be, God, I hate saying this stuff, mm-hmm. but it's like, we have to be careful with our friendships, mm-hmm. right? Cause it, it's not like how it was when, uh, when we were in high school or, you know, where you were just meeting friends. Now there's some people that just want to meet us because there's something that they want mm-hmm. and or there's something that they want to be a part of. And, it, and it's up to us to try and dice, you know, figure that out. And it sucks that we have to do that. And it depends how people approach you too. If they approach you, approach you directly about something, that's one way. But if yeah. they try to do it in a sly, roundabout way, I feel yeah. like it's always the worst way. The worst way. Yeah, just be direct. And be direct, man. And, and be cool and be you. Yeah. Be you. Be genuine. Like, just yep. be genuine. But, like, when you, the thing is, we see, you and I have seen that approach a billion times. So it's like when you're being sly, we see it. We we know we, we know the slyness. Know yeah. We know, yeah, we know that angle. We've been there. We've seen that. So <laughs> yeah, and it's honestly, it's not as like bad. I don't know. Like everybody trash talks Hollywood and stuff and says it's horrible. And I okay, but it's perspective, right? Yeah. I guess that every situation, every town you're in, every job you have your perspective is what your reality is. So I guess it is kind of what you make it. And if I'm going around thinking everybody sucks, everybody wants to use me, I'm kind of putting that energy out there too. Yes. So again, it goes back to balance. I think the the story is balanced with everything. Mm -hmm. No, you can put Amanda, you, you're very, uh, your personality is, uh, very warm. Like you, you stay genuine. Like you are who you, like when I first met you, you're the same person that I saw, you know, like when I watched stuff that you did with Batch and, and you know what I mean? Like, like, yeah. like I always told you right when I met, uh, when I first met you, I was like, dude, you, you cracked me up. And then to see that person in person, you're, you're genuinely that person. Well, and I think you. you're like that with anybody that you meet. And I, and I, and I try and be that way too, you know? Yeah. I mean, so, why not? <laughs> no, but yeah. there's, there, that's, I think that's what you're trying to say though. Like, you know, when we come to Hollywood, we do see those people. Mm-hmm. There are people that you see and you're like, oh, this man, I love it. I can't wait to meet that person. And then you meet them and you're like, <laughs> yeah, it's bad. Yeah. I, there's, there's a few where I'm like, really? I looked up to you, man. Like, why did you do this? Why did you, why'd you end this for me? You know? <laughs> what do they say? It's always Never better. beat your heroes. There it is. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> and it sucks. And, and, and it makes me not want to meet some, you know, because of the ones that I have been. I'm like, wow, why are you like that? Yeah. I mean, if I ever get the opportunity to meet Angelina Jolie, I guess I would. Well, you're going to. Guess I would what? Today's your lucky day. <laughs> Angelina. No, where is she? Are Angelina. You- is she- Hello? <laughs> Angelina. Is, is she not there? She's not here. Oh. She never was. You know, I thought she would be in your man cave, but... Which you got a new man cave, by the way. Joe, I could talk to you forever, but the fact that, like, my host dropped off, my co-host yes. dropped off, too. <laughs> she even... It's so sad. She sent me a text also, and... Yeah. Um, what did she say? I'm just listening. 
<laughs> so Aww. I'm sign off. Um, but yeah, so this, she's so sweet though, isn't she? She's awesome. That was your first time meeting her, right? Yeah, she's so great. Yeah, we'll all have a hang sesh whenever like COVID's over and all this like comes to an end very soon, and maybe at one of your shows because that's I would love gonna that. happen. Vaccines that are gonna work and gonna be great are coming out hopefully. Yes, and which is and I can't good. wait. You kind of got some good news with vaccines. Yeah, like, we'll I, see. Yeah, I'm not trying it yet. But I'm not. I'm going to wait. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to wait too. I'm going to hold off. <laughs> do you do flu shots and stuff? I never do flu shots. You do I. Never. And guess what? I never got the flu. Neither did I. But uh, ugh, doctors are going to hate us for this. They're going to be like, why? People need it. But I don't. Maybe you should screen the people that need it, but I don't need it. Yeah, I'm going to knock on wood though. Yeah. Just in case. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you so much for coming on, Joe. Sorry for the technical difficulties. No. You made it so fun, like always. Guys, make sure you check out Joe at Joe Coy, right? You got your yes. username on Instagram. Yes. Good for you. A lot of people have underscores. So I'm very proud of you for being early to that. Maybe Jacob helped you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Jacob. And yes. Sure you guys, get his book, which is coming out soon. Look at his tour dates coming up. We got Mixed Plate. So check all that good stuff out. Joe's hilarious. Go and, and watch. Uh, oh, little Joe. And, and get the, the Funko. Little, yes. Get those two, which I have mine right above my stove where I will cook my rice, which yes. are you, is that out? Or? It's coming out. It's coming out soon. Yes. I want to, I can't wait. Let's I'm, do a commercial together. I mean, you, to this day, Johannes I taught still, Johannes how to make rice. He still measures it <laughs> like just to there and perfect rice. That's so awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I love you, Joe. Thank you guys so much you. for watching. And Jacqueline, thanks you too. In Bye, Jacqueline. <laughs> one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs> Bye. That'd be great. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye.